we got hit pretty hard in the jet ski industry. And a lot of you guys don't really know, or a lot of you guys don't know these people personally. Um, and so it's hard to kind of feel anything. First, Clayton Jacobson the third. He's the guy who actually came up with the idea of the runabout style sit down, which he sold to uh, Can Am Bombardier back in 67. Or actually, it was earlier than that. It was about 65, 66 that he sold the patent. And they came out in 68 with the first Sea-Doo. Uh, Clayton also uh, approached Kawasaki with the idea for the stand-up. And that gave us the 1973 JS400. We found out that Clayton Jacobson died on Friday. Uh, he was 88 years old. So the guy who was the inventor of of the jet of both versions of the jet ski. Now, on a personal note, uh, I met Clay. I met Clay twice. I uh, talked to him twice. Um, he was in his 70s, 60s, and 70s when I talked to him. So it had been a while ago. And uh, was very affable, very friendly. Loved to see how you know his creation had blossomed into something. And there's a gentleman in our industry uh, named Bill Chapin, and Bill uh, Bill Chapin uh, actually cut his teeth in motocross and was a really competitive motocross rider and racer. And he he started meeting guys on you know on these dirt tracks. And one of them was Glenn Dickinson. Another guy was Mike Fulmer. And uh, what happened was that uh, all of them were getting tired of breaking bones. <laughs> and they ended up getting into jet skis. And jet skis was kind of hot, you know, was hot new stuff. And Bill went to go work for a company called uh, Performance Jet Ski, PJS. And PJS became one of the biggest names in performance stand-up jet skis. I mean, like, if you had a PJS decal on the side of your, uh, you know, side of your ski, you know, you had, you had a hot ski. Uh, after PJS, Bill started working on stuff on his own and subcontracting out. He was more or less Christy Carlson's, the, the blonde bombshell, the really pretty blonde girl, stand-up racer, lightweight, Wiped the floor with a bunch of guys. I mean, really was competitive. Really great athlete. Uh, Christy Carlson, he was basically Christy's like mechanic. And I wouldn't say team manager, but uh, he played a big role in Christy uh, being as fast as she was. And Bill got back together again with Glenn Dickinson. And they started R&D racing. A lot of you guys might remember R&D. R&D... Uh, Made a lot of two-stroke stuff. I mean, they made performance two-stroke stuff. Uh, and it was funny was that it would be like Bill would come up with this Frankenstein, you know, pump or this Frankenstein pickup or intake grade or something like that. And it was all welded and cobbled and ground down. And it was this gnarly thing. And Glenn knew how to machine stuff. So Glenn would ma start making these, um, you know, would make molds of these products. And then they'd produce them. Bill and Glenn really created, uh, more or less, well, they, of course, created R&D, but they started creating a lot of the larger two-stroke runabout parts, and then they segued into four-stroke. And uh, Mike Fulmer was a very active Yamaha racer, and the, the Mike might not have been the fastest guy, but Mike was absolutely consistent. He typically won overalls because he was so consistent. I mean, he podium. He wasn't first all the time, but he was a very con he's a very conservative racer. He's since retired from jet ski racing, but he was a very conservative racer. You never saw him balls the wall blowing up stuff and swapping paint. That was never his style. But uh, Fulmer was a fantastic rep representative for Yamaha, and so through. Watkins at Yamaha, Fulmer, Bill Chapin, Glenn Dickinson, they were producing a lot of amazing product. Uh, and of course, Riva was building product, and Riva and R&D kind of had a kind of had a feud. They got along on some stuff and they private labeled some stuff for, for Riva. And so it was kind of this weird tug of war. But um Bill was behind designing all that stuff. 
Bill was instrumental in making some really, really, really fast stuff. And when I was at Personal Watercraft Illustrated, uh, I was invited out to Havasu. God, it must have been early 2009. Bill hit me up and said, I got something crazy going on here. He says, I got, I think his last name was McAfee. It was Pete, Pete McAfee from MoTeC ECUs. And this is before handheld tuners were ever a thing. You had to have a separate ECU. And we went out. And in three days, we documented GPS runs, which, by the way, no one had GPSs at the time. I mean, they were expensive. I mean, they were really expensive. And the technology just was really clunky. And you didn't have a nice little, you know, speed recording GPSs. So we were using accelerometers and a bunch of stuff to, to document speeds. But in three days, we documented uncrating. We literally uncrated. The Yamaha FZS SHO in 2009. Took it out for an hour and a half. Did our bare minimum break in. Brought it in. And then step by step. Installed. Hot lapped. Installed. Hot lapped. Installed. Hot lapped. Every single product. And we used like, I want to say like 11 or 12 different things from R&D to push that SHO FZ to 80 miles an hour with me on it. And I, and we, I went like 80.1 and a half. I mean, it was ridiculous. And um, that was my best experience with Bill Chapin. Well, Bill, unfortunately, Bill was 65. We found out Saturday morning that he passed away at 3.30 a.m. on Saturday morning. Uh, he was, he was, to my understanding, from what I've been told uh, from people who were close to the family, uh, Bill was in the hospital because they wanted to perform a relatively basic surgery. Well, it was heart surgery though, but uh, it would be invasive, but it, it had a really good uh, survival and the problem is that he, apparently he had an infection and they wanted to wait till the infection cleared before they operated on his heart. And uh, unfortunately, it got the best of him. So we were, we're at a loss because Bill, I mean, Farthing, McCluggage, Fulmer, uh, Canamori, I mean... I can't, uh, Matsuras, uh, uh, some of the fastest guys on the planet had had Bill Bill's fingerprints on, on him. And uh, it just sucks. Bill wanted zero spotlight. I mean, when he was given an acknowledgement at one of the Mark Hans, he damn near refused to go on the stage. <laughs> he just, uh, he just, wasn't that kind of guy. So we're trying to we're trying to go against his best wishes and give him some praise for for the massive impact that man had on on the industry. Hey guys, thanks for hanging out. This clip was taken from our weekly podcast that we record here every Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to watch the whole video, you can go to the Watercraft Journal's YouTube channel, go to playlists and then click on live sessions. You're going to see it there. Otherwise, go ahead and leave a like, a comment, and definitely subscribe to the channel. It helps us grow. And again, thanks again for watching our videos, and we hope to see you soon.